So ADL, the a ADL is the Anti-Defamation League. It, it, it is one of these um, civil rights organizations that has a long history, decades and decades long history, uh, basically, uh, basically uh, defending um, and uh, defending Jews from anti-Semitism. So, uh, you know, highlighting uh, occurrences of anti-Semitism, fighting against uh, anti-Semitism when it arises, uh, uh, and uh, you know, not not trying to restrict people's speech, but trying to stop people from threatening, trying to stop. Uh, violence uh, and and uh, and challenging, challenging people who who argue uh, and make anti-Semitic uh, claims. And ADL, by all accounts, uh, historically has done a very good job at this, and and has been at the forefront together with other organizations that used to do a pretty good job at these kind of things, like the you know the ACLU. Um, uh, that that used to be, you know, very, very good uh, on, for example, free speech issues. Well, there is growing evidence that the uh, ADL over the last few years has been taken over by kind of uh, extreme leftists, uh, uh, you know, the more crazy left side of the political spectrum. People who don't have respect for free speech, people don't, um, don't really understand what it is uh, that they are trying to do. Uh, there's a, a significant evidence that the ADL has become much more, for example, lenient towards anti-Semitism coming from the left and much harsher with regard to anti-Semitism coming to the right, that it's become a lot more political, a lot more aligned with certain left-wing interests rather than with defending its mission, which has been to speak out against anti-Semitism and to highlight anti-Semitic activity. Anyway, all of this... Has come, and, and, and this has been debated uh, within, it's called Jewish circles. It's been debated for quite a while uh, that the ADL has, has kind of taken a, a wrong turn, just like if you follow the ACLU and you follow the discussion about the ACLU, clearly the ACLU has taken a wrong turn and, and become uh, anti-free speech when it was one of the great defenders of free speech uh, in American history in, in, in decades past. And, and the consequence, this is all the consequence of the capture of these organizations by uh, elements on the, on the far left that are hostile to free speech and that have taken these organizations and politicized them, made them organizations dedicated to the, the woke or, or politically correct or whatever you want, whatever the, the latest term uh, for it, uh, agenda uh, of the left rather than as actually protecting individual rights. Anyway, all of this has come to the forefront because, uh, you know, ADL uh, has been on, uh, has, has talked about, has mentioned uh, repeatedly that they think that Twitter, uh, since Elon Musk has taken over, has become a place uh, much more tolerant of anti-Semitism and uh, a place that is, uh, that, uh, that is promoting it in a sense, uh, it blamed Twitter for promoting anti-Semitism. And indeed, as, as Elon Musk claims, has approached uh, advertisers who used to advertise on Twitter, or X, or however they want to call it these days, and encouraged those advertisers not to, not to advertise on Twitter anymore because Twitter is a platform that promotes anti-Semitism, right? Uh, and... Uh, you know, the, the, the head of the ADL, uh, a, a, a well-known kind, of, uh, kind of leftist, met last week with the CEO of Twitter. The idea was, could they talk about it? Could they come to some understanding? And, and there was some reason to believe that the meeting had gone well. But then over the weekend, uh, Elon Musk came out basically... Uh, you know, ridiculing the ADL or, or attacking the ADL for really destroying significant ad revenue for Twitter. And Elon Musk is blaming ADL for, for a decline of 60% in the ad revenue, in the advertising revenue at Twitter because of ADL's campaign to convince advertisers not to advertise uh, because uh, of, of uh, the platform's uh, views. 
the last thing that happened, I guess yesterday or the day before, was that Elon Musk uh, threatened to sue the Anti-Defamation League for defamation, for defaming Twitter, for speaking ill of Twitter, for lying about Twitter, and thus uh, hurting its uh, business. Now, whether that is a, a legitimate lawsuit or if that, if that is a lawsuit that could be successful at all is not something I know, not my area of expertise, defamation laws. But certainly this has got everybody's attention. Uh, and, and, and really, there, there are a, a two sides. You can see how the world splits into two on these things. Uh, one side is, uh, you know, on the ADL side saying, yes, finally, uh, we're, we're having an impact. We're getting Elon Musk's attention. Uh, it's about time that, you know, Twitter stopped being this crazy right wing, anti-Semitic, racist uh, platform. So that is certainly uh, one side of the equation. The other side is... Finally, Elon Musk, uh, somebody on, in social media standing up to places like the ADL and other NGOs who are accusing platforms of not being woke enough and, uh, and really going, going after advertisers and, uh, uh, and, and hurting the platforms unless the platforms cave. So uh, a lot of these NGOs supposedly are using blackmail, uh, blackmailing uh, the platforms in order to get them to limit, uh, limit the speech on the platforms. Now, you know, I, I, my suspicion here in this particular case is, uh, is that uh, the ADL is probably not guilty of defamation per se, but is, uh, but is wrong. That is uh, wrong to to go after uh, Twitter uh, as as a platform for anti-Semitism. Although I'm sure there's anti-Semitism being expressed on Twitter. I mean, Twitter's problems are the same problems of all the social media, and we all we've talked about them for years. And the problem is of non-objective standards, not clear standards of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable as speech on the platform. Not being objective about it, so it's hard to tell. So ADL. Is, is clearly exaggerating this phenomenon, is clearly motivated. If you judge the ADL by everything that it does, it's clearly motivated by kind of a more woke, anti-free speech agenda uh, that it has. Uh, Elon Musk is, uh, is uh, you know, ADL is, is within its rights to tell people, hey, we think this platform is anti-Semitic don't use it. People can make their own judgments and make their own commercial decisions about whether to advertise on Twitter or not. I doubt that there's any illegal, I mean, any legal liability here. Uh, these are the kind of disputes that need to be settled in the marketplace. Elon Musk can do what he wants with Twitter. ADL can do what it wants with its money as long as it doesn't engage in illegal activity and, or, or defamation being an illegal activity. Uh, but... Uh, Elon is probably making a big deal out of all of this because it suits his purposes, whatever they might be, among others, to, to make himself kind of a, a, a big-time defender of speech, free speech and also, you know, discourse certain marketing points by standing up uh, to uh, the ADL. I, 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 I uh, you know, it's clear to me that I, I, this is not motivated from Elon Musk's perspective by anti-Semitism. There's no reason to believe that. Uh, this is, but this is, this is uh, his opportunity to, to stand up, to perceive bad guys, make himself into a hero for a certain crowd. Um, uh, sadly, the crowd that has rallied around Elon Musk uh, on this issue, many of them are the anti-Semites on Twitter. Uh, Nick Fuentes is, 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 uh, has, uh, is one of the people that uh, has rallied around Musk. Ban the ADL has become a hashtag on Twitter, promoted a lot by, by some anti-Semites. Uh, Nick Fuentes is an anti-Semite. Unfortunately, Musk is doing what he often does, which is interacting with horrible people. And, and I think by doing that, sanctioning them. So Musk is not clean here completely either. Uh, people like Nick Fuentes, I don't want to ban their speech, but they need to be recognized for what they are. They are the crudest type of anti-Semitic racist slick, horrible individuals. Uh, and, and somebody like Elon shouldn't have anything to do with them, even if they're still on the platform. There's zero reason 
to interact with people associated with uh, Fuentes. So uh, this is, of course, creating a big to-do online. It's it's a it's it's a you know it's it's a it's an interesting issue about whether Twitter is becoming a platform that is dominated by ugly voices or, or voices that, while you don't want to silence, you also don't want to be in the neighborhood. You don't want to you don't want to be exposed to. You don't want to be interacting with them. And and how bad is it on Twitter? I don't see those things on Twitter. But then you know I only follow certain people, and and uh, and I guess I I only interact with certain. Uh, people and therefore the, the the algorithm only feeds me certain stuff, uh, but I know they're out there because doing my research I find them. Uh, to what extent this is, how prevalent this is, uh, is probably exaggerated, or uh, I'm pretty sure he's exaggerated by the uh, the ADL. But there, there is an issue. There is an issue, and Nick Fuentes maybe represents that issue. And the fact again that Musk interacts with some of these weirdos only enhances their power, uh, gives them more followers, uh, you know, expands their exposure, and, and that is sad. So I'm not siding with either party here. I, I think they're both probably motivated by the wrong things, uh, but it's going to be interesting to watch this uh, play out uh, in, on Twitter and elsewhere.